What's up everybody? Brett here. I'm back today playing some more Battle Brothers. It's our Demons of Dov Cool Company Origins Let's Play. Alright, it's our third episode I believe. I went ahead and took this fight off camera. It was some thugs and poachers I believe. It was a pretty small fight. Um, we picked up some loot. Nothing too serious. We also leveled up Wilhelm. Let's go ahead and give him nine lives as we're you know playing quite thematic for those of you who maybe are just tuning in this is not a super serious run I like to do my runs very thematic if I can and that's what we're up to so these cultists have nine lives makes them terrifying it also makes it pretty likely that we can uh, survive some some difficult fights so right now I took a contract armed courier so we got to go up north to deliver something let's see what we've got here we've got a nice stash but the prices here are terrible um, on just about ev everything, really. Yeah, we don't really want to buy anything from here, and we don't want to sell anything here either. Dietrich the Blessed? A tailor? No. Sounds like a guy who will just get sacrificed. So let's go up to Assenstadt. I don't know if you guys ever watch the show Vikings, but every time I, I see this, or a name similar to this, I just think of Appelstad. The priest secluded cemetery this is a good way to make some cash while we are uh, you know headed on a delivery mission oh god that's not what you want to see hopefully there's not another one okay it's level two all right guys I think this might be the first time we fought this enemy on this playthrough For those of you who aren't familiar with them, Nagzurs are ghouls essentially, and they're cannibalistic, and we need to cut them down in a very specific type of order. I like that our front line is nice and wide, that's pretty helpful, um, but we missed a lot of attacks just now. So this turn they're going to jump in, that's fine. Some decent terrain here we possibly could have used in some way. Let's just hold steady. And the thing is, you want to take out the little ones, and then you want to step over their corpses. Interesting that they're not moving in. So let's say we kill this guy, we need to then step on his tile. That way one of the other ones can't move in. And eat him. And become bigger. So now where this is really tested right now, is in, the big one is hiding in here. Let's just keep passing. See how they step in. Some of them haven't moved yet. The third size, like, so it goes little guy, medium guy, big guy hiding in the grass. And the medium sized guy can turn into the big sized guy, but all the big sized guy can do is heal. So we're not worried. If he wants to step in here, that's fine. What we don't want to happen is for this guy to step in here. That's bad. Best thing to do if you have the ability, if you have really accurate, uh, strong brothers, is to put like one hit on, on them. Get them really softened up. That was a pretty rough miss. We'll step here. Okay. These misses are becoming quite serious. We really want to kill that guy. We also want to get rid of the little minions that are helping him. So we're going to send most of our resources to this fight here. Alright, one down. They're also very susceptible to routing. We're happy he stepped in there and decided to eat. Or not to eat, rather. But Wilhelm is in a quadruple surround. Okay, holding his own though. And we get eaten. So that's kind of the big worry. If we land this hit, we just get the kill. Kind of the same there. Alright, stacking some bleed. Alright. Okay. 
Once they start to waver, you've kind of got them. Went for the decapitation. He was kind of below half HP. And that was a mistake. I did not mean to move to that position. But it probably won't really bite me in the butt. Alright, he's routing. That's even better. Okay, Wilhelm. Survive, buddy. Not, not the best played fight. I think I'm trying to talk a little too much instead of fighting. Wilhelm, doing great. Right now, it's kind of all about what this Nagzerher does, this big one. Nice, and Wilhelm proven to be kind of an MVP right now. We'll get him here. Perfect. Step in for the better surround. If we can kill this thing, which I know we can. And we get our buddy back. There we go. And Whittled might not be happy, but at least he's not dead. Let's circle around. So we've got him pretty well tied down. Of course, all our attacks need to go into the dude that's not quite running yet. So this went well. <laughs> Hopefully we get a lot of crafting ingredients. I'm not seeing very many on the ground. Could go for the stun, but I think we're just going to be able to get the kills here. Could have switched back to our bow. Doesn't matter though. This this battle's over for sure. Nicely done though. Should be some decent experience. I see the horns there. Oh, we did. We got a silver bowl. That's nice, and a little bit of crowns. Some brains we can kind of sell. Jagged fangs, horns. This is all stuff. We, we have a lot of gold right now, actually, for where we are. But it's perhaps not enough to start consider crafting things. There's a taxidermist there. Um, you know what? We're a little bit busted up right now, especially our armor. So, yeah, we need 12 tools and supplies. We're also, you know, we have some brothers that are a little bit hurt. Let's just come here and turn this in. Make some purchases. Sell some things. And see what's up. They've got ambush trade routes. Let's see how that either positively or negatively affects our ability to trade. I've been using the rugged surcoat. It's worth 100. So I see 17 is a pretty decent price. You'll see this is worth 490. Sells for 550. That's good enough for me. And we'll get rid of all these crafting ingredients that we don't need. Swords, pretty weak stuff. Wooden flail, pretty weak. I don't really need the staff sling. I don't hate it though. I'll sell the, the busted up hand axe. Okay. Anything that I would like to have. Let's get some food. Put us up to five days. Everything else is pretty poorly costed. There is a hunting bow here. I like that a lot. You know, you're not going to see a better price than a beat up hunting bow like this. Might grab that. Let's see before we do anything if there's anyone good to hire. There's a cultist here. Another cultist. Mm. Get in here, buddy. That puts us up to 12. That finishes our ambition. One point in hit points. He's a determined pessimist. Ugh. And all of his stars are in kind of the wrong things. Resolve and hit points aren't terrible, but range defense is not super useful, as far as I'm concerned. And we could switch out his armor a little bit. Kind of like, just like that, he's pretty well armored for the front line. Good to go. This is a 50 cap. This is a 45, yeah, so we should switch those out. Make sure the front liners are a little bit better equipped and anyone who may be in melee needs to be better equipped as well 
Okay, and now we're able to go sort of wide with our formation. Anyone else need that dagger we just picked up? Sure, give it to him here. We may end up selling those at some point. But that's our ambition. Let's see what the... Um, yeah, let's get that bow. I was going to say, let's see what the, the mission is for us. Who's got the best ranged attack? So for right now, it's Rolo. But Whittled has two stars and Eagle Eye. So he's going to definitely be the superior archer at some point. And Lammy will be a good archer one day. Or at least a decent archer, a decent crossbowman. But we haven't really had the opportunity to get any crossbows. A little frustrating. I haven't seen any recently. The Barbarians east of here. Let's say we need some time to think about this. Um, that's about where we want to be right now. But to be honest, a uh, two-skull contract... We could probably do it. Barbarians are good. If they're Reavers, we could get some new loot. Um, we need a few more levels, I think, before we can reliably hit dudes like that. Let's also tuck him in, give him a better chance to survive. Um, yeah, I think if we go up against a, like a bunch of Reavers, which is what I think we'd be fighting here, like let's say even just like six or seven of them, we're going to lose a lot of guys. Like a lot. I'm much more inclined right now. I think I want to go down here and try and fight some more undead, especially if they're ancient auxiliaries. Uh, a couple legionnaires mixed in could give us some good weapon upgrades. And here we go. Ambition fulfilled. Having finally gathered the coin and equipment, you manage to assemble a full complement of 12 able fighters. When next you walk down Eisenstadt's main street, the men break into a full-throated marching song. A few of the townsfolk mutter under their breath about dirty mercenaries taking over the town, but others walk alongside and shout the words with you. Stand tall, brothers. People can see this is a real mercenary company now, and not a handful of wandering vagabonds, Whittle declares. We trade in strength, and now that our numbers have gone up, so will our price. It appears he has the right of it. You notice one particularly fat nobleman sizing up the company, as if he already has a task in mind. The demons of Dov Kool are now a force to be reckoned with. Once the men have settled in for a celebratory drink, perhaps you should take another stroll through town to see if any more lucrative contracts may be available. I'm cool with that. And I think we're nearly fixed up. Can speed up the process a little bit. And let's go see what's in the Crypt of Ogmar. It could be a fight we need to run from. Who knows? Okay, I see armored Weedergangers and Geiss. That has me a little bit worried. But check this out. I see some opportunity here. These things might as well be barricades, guys. If you've never, like, considered terrain in this game very much, consider it now. Like, this is that's actually kind of amazing. I don't know if I've ever seen this particular series of formations. Which is kind of weird, because you see a lot of repeating patterns in Battle Brothers if you play it long enough. And right now, what we have is the opportunity to seriously funnel... To make some really strong, uh, f like, fortified positions right here. I'm actually kind of shocked by it. Sure, we'll move back there. Move back here. Now what we're going to do is they're going to step in here and get 2v1. They'll step in here and get 1v1. And then we'll make another 2v1 here. Here and here, or here and here. Actually, we could probably make a 3v1. And what that's going to do is allow us to make it even more than that. I mean, if someone steps in here, it's a 5v1, right? You know, you've got to also consider the back, the back uh, ground people as well. And we're going to make kind of a little wall here. And this guy with his pole arm will be able to support. And it'll really be up to the dude with the whip to kill the guys. Hopefully they'll get close enough. This might be too tough of a fight. But if we come out of this with some of these helmets and, and mail, we'll be really happy, I think. We just don't have a standard. That's the roughest thing when fighting this many guys. You know what, guys? If we lose this, like, spectacularly, I'm going to uh, reload the save, the autosave. We could just run. But I think, honestly, this is a fight we can take. I love our positioning. I think it's really cool. I 
Everyone else just kind of waits. I'm thinking about where to put this guy, because we could put him here, and then him here. That's probably what we should do. We'll back up there. Back up here. And if we need to, we can just shield wall in the front. Probably forever. Because they're not going to get any type of surround on us. They have some dangerous weapons though. I'm seeing this scramus axe. Hand axe. There's a hatchet right there. We just need to put some damage on the armor. That way it's much easier to kill them. When they do step in. Just pass, pass, pass. I love this uh, formational geometry. That's, that's something I think is kind of missing in this game a little bit. A little more of this. Yeah, you've got terrain and sometimes you have these types of obstacles. But it's, it's not often enough, I feel. I think what this game really needs, and I've probably said this before, is like city battles. I can think of a lot more obstacles that you could put in a way. You could put carts, you know, derelict structures, all different types of stuff. Make it almost more XCOM, if you can think of it that way. Have the ability to take cover and things like that. Almost like a tabletop game. Ooh, now this might be a problem. I actually didn't consider this. Uh, our line of sight is somewhat blocked. Hmm. Well, we'll see about this as we might be able to push out with the top and then wrap around. We'll see. Yeah, line of sight is definitely a real consideration. Fortunate misses. Alright, the guys are all kind of grouping up south. If they all come down here, we'll move the, uh, the whip down there as well. Maybe the AI won't be stupid and they won't take the bait. But I feel like they will. They're just zombies. They're going to try and fill up every available gap. Someone's going to jump here, here, and here. Let's pass. We can let them get even closer. Pretty much exactly as predicted so far. Boy, that does, that does nothing. Alright, let's get down here. Try and mirror them. Misses like that, though, they aren't that acceptable. Like, we don't have a huge margin for, you know, those type of misses. We have to, we have to land hits. If we want to make it out of this. And also, getting decapitations is going to be, I think, pretty pretty crucial as well. Making sure some of these guys don't come back. So like here, I fully expected him to come back. Okay, that's unfortunate. He stepped right into the spot we were worried about not being able to hit with and we would have been able to hit had we stepped in so we're gonna come here and get a triple surround it doesn't help us immediately a shield wall here but if we land this hit now we have a better chance right shield wall here as well let's go for it 25 percent we whiff went for the decapitation and we nailed it okay he wants to run, but there's nowhere he can go. It's actually just fine. If we can kill this dude quickly, we can get into the back line and start taking out those guys. Uh, 
that'll work. I was about to say, we may have just freed him up to try and run easier. Can't miss any more attacks down there, though. That's, that's going to kill us. And I'm aware that we are kind of wrecking our fatigue with these two guys. Hopefully they have enough to shield wall next turn. Come on, no mass routes and we'll be fine. Okay, no mass routes. Alright, that's a decapitation at least. Alright, so we've missed 325% chance shots. Not abnormal. Decapitation there is pretty important. I think we just shield wall now. And hopefully it protects us. It didn't protect us from that hit. Which is kind of weird because we, we do have a double shield wall up. Man, it didn't help us at all. Good decapitation. We won't step forward at this point. Okay, let's come over here. Get a shot on this dude. And do that. Might as well. I've gotten lucky before. It happens. Step up here and kind of cover our backs. Now we need to kill these things before they route us. And there's a high probability that they just scream at the ones they get close and take them out. But I think we are in good position to defend ourselves. We just need certain zombies to not come back. I can't remember everyone that's been decapitated. Okay, that didn't kill us. That sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Alright. We have a chance. So let's not get over eager. We step up. Wait here. We'll get a better surround. Perfect. That does so little damage. Come on, shield wall. Get these surrounds and... Oh, he went for the shield. Interesting. They do have a lot of axes. Let's try and get rid of this guy. Because that by itself sort of lessens the threat. Okay, he needs to reload. Do we have extra stuff? No, we don't. Okay. Let's get in there. Support our brothers. He ran in the right direction. If he rallies next turn, he'll be fine. It's pretty bad. Well, our big surround here didn't kill anything yet. Come on, guys. We need some kills. No mass routes. Damn. That's so bad. And now we've got a dude here with no armor. Try to take away his weapon, it didn't work. And I have a bad feeling we're just going to completely whiff repetitively. Dang. Just too many misses. Can we get this? A 53% chance and we do. That's... Still rough, because we've, now we've got to get all these guys here in time to save them.
and to take some of the heat off. But I'm worried about Whittled. I don't think he's in a good spot. I mean, I know he's not in a good spot. So we're going to step up here with second Whittled. <laughs> Whittled the second. And just use him as a damage sponge. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. His armor's not as good. Um, but this guy's only got 46 HP in a helmet. They just barely have to touch him and he's going to die. Give him as many targets as possible to distract them. You'll see there it kind of worked. They went for him instead. And they're missing quite a bit. Very good. I mean, that was all pure luck, of course. But it's hard to complain. And the whip does decent damage versus the, the unarmored. Okay, he's got way too much health to do anything, but attack. Get in there, Herbert. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get as lucky this turn, though. That was some pretty next level luck. We just missed way too many times. We've got to land these types. Like that hit, that's got to land, right? And think about how many misses Torkoal had in the beginning. Stuff like that really does snowball. Got to get that kill because we can't let him attack with like, you know, 10 HP left. A triple surround here. And I feel like Whittle's going down now. He's still hanging in there. The eye of a tiger. Let's move out here. And now our biggest problem is that our guys are just exhausted. Went for the decapitation and didn't get it. And I would 100% shield wall if I could, but I'm exhausted. There's no way this Weeder Ganger should still be alive. Okay, that was good. That was really good. We needed that. Alright, Whittle's gonna die. I, I have zero faith he survives. Nine lives kicks in. Was expecting that. We're full HP, so I'm gonna risk that just to get another target here. And he's missed three attacks in a row, which is really worth noting. That's a lot of attacks when your life is on the line. Hopefully we've given him some other targets to attack. You know what, I don't play with 9 lives often enough, but maybe the play was to try and move him at some point, and let the 9 lives trigger and just be like, whatever. But now that it's triggered, his chance of dying is really high. We're gonna get, you know, first crack at some of this though. I think we can kill this dude, it's really just this one. Alright, that was a bad miss. That was pretty awful. And here we go. Come on, Whittled. Damn, was rooting for him. We just missed way too much, it was pretty garbage luck.
Let's get a better surround here. Was hoping to get the kill this turn. That way these guys don't come back to life on us, because I'm, I'm sure they will. And then we're going to have to hit them more, and we all we're doing is increasing our chance that we don't get our armor. So like now we just destroyed that helmet. In all probability, we destroyed that helmet. So Whittled is dead. Lame as hell. We get our gear back. Sort of. We don't get the armor. We get an ornate tome and some crowns. Worth it? No. Not. Well, maybe. Maybe. Was he one of our companions? I actually don't remember. Do our companions all have Fnatic? I think so. He wasn't one of our originals, but still. I mean, that was pretty crappy. That was just a lot of bad luck. And we did get some good stuff from that. Um, we can go here and give him the kettle hat. This definitely messes with your vision, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter for a dude using a whip. That's better than that. And anything else that we need to switch up? We'll just pick up another guy. I mean, it's not a huge deal. Let's head down to... God damn it, Biebersburg. Justin Bieber has infiltrated all aspects of our society. And I'm not okay with it. Yeah, we've got a lot of money. We can absorb the loss of one, like, level four brother. Which is what I think he was. We can actually look it up real quick. Yeah. One of our original guys, that's for sure. But now we have a little bit of money. I mean, we could pick up a cell sword. That's... A little too spendy, I think, for us. Deserters are okay. A bowyer. Nah, those dudes usually suck. Let's grab another butcher. We've had good luck with these backgrounds. Three stars and hit points. And some pretty good stats to back it up. He's fat. But he's got a star and fatigue to help him with that. And fat kind of comes and goes. He's got a hate for greenskins. This guy's not bad. Not bad at all, but we do we do need to give him some armor that we don't currently possess. But I'm sure we'll pick something up in a second here. Yeah, good. I'll take that. Stay cheap. We gotta stay cheap and low to the ground. Some more food, some cheap stuff. A dog. We don't have any dogs yet. And some in our first crossbow. Even a Oh my god, that's a half price bill hook, guys. Oh my god. Before we start spending all of our cash, because we very easily could. Wow, look at all the stuff they have here. Bunch of basic male shirts and padded leathers and busted flat tops and busted nasal helmets. I think we can make a, a decent series of purchases here. Let's really get rid of the junk and see what we've got. Working with 4K. Okay, let's go to the weaponsmith first. Hmm, anything I can't live without? Not really. They have pikes. I mean, I like I like getting a good pike, but we're going to get a cheaper bill. That's 1200 for the pike. And I already know I'm buying this. This is 820 for a bill hook. Get in my inventory. And that's going to go to Hartwig for now. Oh, we, have, we also have some levels. Let's, let's take care of that. Lammy. I'm going to hook you up there. Boom. Boom. And boom. All right. And then for Herobert. Nine lives for you, my friend. Four, three. 
I wish that wasn't a one, so we'll just take a four here. Make him a little bit tankier. All right. I want the dog. I want the crossbows. I kind of want both of them, but I think if I have to choose, I'll just pick up uh, the better crossbow. It's a 125 helmet. It's not bad. It's really these basic male shirts that I want. Um, if I could just kill the right enemies, though, I could just be getting these for free. Alright, who is important? You gotta live, buddy. You're tough and brave. Like, you're in the crew. Probably anyone, actually, that has a two-handed weapon. That's already much better. Yeah. I would like the dog, but I don't think we're in the, the buying dog position right now. Uh, so think about what a dog can do for you. Um, if you've got a lot of dogs, you can overwhelm certain enemies. If you have one dog, all he can do is tie down an enemy for like a few turns, potentially. Or just die and lose you 200 crowns. So we're not rich. Um, we're, we're doing okay, but we're not rich. And I think I'm going to favor the crossbow here over the whip. And keep the whip as kind of a cool like backup weapon. I think that's a pretty good upgrade for us. Some of that. Okay. Anything else I can't live without? These are definitely good pickups. They are upgrades for what we're currently using. And we do still have some stuff that's worse than padded leather. But there is a busted up leather lamellar armor. Which is 95. Uh, 95 durability that is versus 80. We'll grab that. That's pretty cheap. We'll put that on someone in the front. Okay. And that cultist robe can go on... Let's do it on someone in the front. We're, we're, you know, we're rearranging chairs on the Titanic, kind of like, we're talking about very small percentages that we're dealing with, but I, it is worth it. You do want to do the right thing. You want to put the right gear on the right people. It is important. And then we could buy this one as well for a pretty decent discount. But I think I'm just going to buy this helmet here, the flat top. And we're going to go and give it to Baldwin. And that's going to let us free up another decent helmet. So how many days can we pay for? Ten more days. We've got food for a while. Let's get some bread, actually. Bread's got an eight-day shelf life. We do need tools, of which there are none here. That's interesting. Okay, need to pay attention to that. We don't even have enough tools to repair what we have. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I think that's about all we can get from this place. We also need to remember, too, that... Let's check on the Fletcher. That there are no... quests here for us. Uh, they have much cheaper dogs in the kennel. Dang, I do want that. For the price of this, we could get a dog. Let's get Lord. Does he go here? Yeah, okay. I don't know why I was thinking he didn't go in that slot. Alright, so we've got a dog on our dude with a bill hook. Even that bill hook, guys, we land an attack with that and we're going to get kills. Which is what it's all about. But we need to find somewhere to go and get some quests done. Um, Griffin Wall is a small fortification. Let's see. Yeah, we can't do anything there. 
So I guess we just head back to Talbak. And see what's good there. There's got to be some wild stuff here. I was kind of hoping we get attacked by some raiders, a small group on the road, something like that. Could always attack a trading caravan. And we're at day 19, and we haven't had any type of negative... Oh, God, look at the price on tools. We haven't had any type of negative um, cultist-themed event take place. Grave robbers... Sure. I'll go do that. Um, we're going to have to buy tools when we get back. I just can't see us doing it beforehand. For like 400. Maybe when we get back they'll like us a little bit more. Certain events will be disappeared. Do we fight them at night? It definitely gives us a disadvantage, but I also don't want to wait. We're in the forest, so that kind of means we need them to come really close to us anyway. And it looks like they have poachers, so that's actually great. It makes them less effective as well. Oh, these dudes are done. We outclass thugs. Like, we, we, we seriously outclass thug groups now. Um, it's raiders that we need to kill. Raiders and reavers. I don't, I don't even want to shoot them yet. Like, not until we see the whites of their eyes type of thing. I will move uh, our axemen down one, though. Make sure I don't overclick through that. If we could have hid in the bush, that would have been pretty cool. But what a mismatch of armor and things we have here. And they're going to take shots, but... If they hit me with their 5% rolls, I'm going to be super disappointed. God, it's... I missed having a crossbow. I feel like I haven't had a crossbow in forever. But that's only because I've been starting new games and not getting them. Should 100% have waited to attack that last turn. That's alright. And that's because we, we get better percentages if we wait. We'll go defensive up top because they've already kind of broken through the geometry that would allow us to be the most effective. We could go and like keep them there. Damn, I was hoping to get our first bill hook kill. Get it bloody. We also need to consider trying to close the distance with these range dudes. We can only see one, two, three, four, five, six of them. There's three more. And for all we know, they do have some raiders out there. Wow, we went through all the trouble of, like, not moving in. And I stepped in just for that one attack. Okay, it's another thug. Wouldn't be surprised if he hit his own dude in the back. Thank you. Perfect. And that frees us up to do other things. Two lucky hits. And I say that because he does have his shield wall up, so the odds there probably weren't very high. And yeah, we just need to kind of accept that we're not going to catch the dudes with the bows. We don't. We only have one dog, and I don't really want to risk one dog. If I had like two or three, you send them out, and they'll kill a poacher no problem. But you send out one, and then they pull out a knife, and they kill your dog. He's not an armored war dog. And he's not a warhound either, which are bigger. But yeah, we made some progress today as well. We're not quite done with our episode, that's for sure, but... There's one raider. He's got a helmet and a falchion. 
And that looks like a Lamellar armor, like the one we bought. I'm cool with that. And we'll reload here. We don't need this, this bolt to get the kill, I don't believe. Wow, can we not go all the way around there? Let's just see if we can't... I don't want that raider to escape. Wow. We gotta go so far around. I don't even know if we can go around here. Okay. Let's let everyone move in the proper order. Move here so we can see what's up, and then move up. Get the bill hook in there. We could use some more quivers, too. I'd love to kill these guys just so we can equip our dudes with extra quivers. So that we don't find ourselves running out of ammo. In the middle of these longer fights. That was kind of a problem in that Weederganger fight. So, but we got to be able to catch him. He's going to run. And we're not going to catch him. Interesting. We might catch him now. Well, that sucked. It's not what I meant to do, but that's okay. That's very good, because it's going to allow us to step in now. Now, they're in a pretty tight defensive spot. I can only get one guy in at a time. And this is a 1v1 with a raider. Bear in mind. So I need to be pretty smart about who I place where. So for instance, you know, having Hagen right behind here doesn't make a lot of sense. What we need to do is get Hurtwig here to support Wilhelm. And we need to get our crossbowmen and archers, two of them, here behind Herobert. And we have the, false, the force multiplication, so to speak, to, uh, to win these fights more easily. Not saying that we couldn't even win it on our own, but it's definitely harder. I mean, a raider is no pushover when you're basically wearing raider gear, which is what we're wearing. It's almost a completely even matchup. Okay. You guys can just chill. What we need to do is get rid of that dude and then meet in the middle on the raider. See if we can't move, maybe go around. Well, we're going to take a page out of his book and go defensive. I think it's smart. Get rid of these two dudes and it's pretty much smooth sailing. And every time we swing and hit him, even if we, you know, don't hit him, hit him. Uh, we still mess up his fatigue, so he won't be able to shield wall and attack every single turn. Alright, let's keep on passing. Shield wall repost, that's pretty smart. But, like I said, he won't be able to do that forever. And we don't even really have to play that game. We can just shoot in until we get lucky. Let's get in here. Can we jump over? We can't. Alright. Shield to shield. Still haven't even gotten our bill hook wet. Feels bad. But we can jump in a bunch of dudes now. We can put 
Three brothers on top. I know, it's riveting stuff. Sorry guys, this is how nighttime forest battles always end up. He's almost exhausted, we've nearly got him. We'll wait. Alright, we're gonna pass. That was great, but we destroyed his helmet. Who are we going to dump in? I think it's going to be Hagen. It's alright. Now we got a three-man surround. And this should be the end of that. dead step in there down he goes okay Whew. a little bit more stressful than it needed to be we did get that extra quiver of arrows i was talking about and a little bit of extra gold to supplement how little we're being paid for this and we will absolutely need to buy tools hopefully like i said the prices have gone down let's get colossus first and this is Heribert, our newest pickup. 3, 3, and 3, sure. And here, 9 lives on Baldwin. Take a 3. Hmm. These are all pretty bad. 4 and a 2, maybe. 9 lives on Torkoal. Nice to see that three. Good five on fatigue. And then we'll also take a three here in melee defense. Good stuff. And let's head back to Taubak and get paid. 400 crowns. About the cost of one stack of tools, which we desperately need. We also used a lot of ammo in that fight. Kind of unnecessarily, maybe. Uh, we don't have enough pitchfork type weapons. And we don't have quick hands on our guys yet. Um, Warfork, definitely better than a Pitchfork. 40 to 60 versus 30 to 50. It's the next tier up. Let's see what the tools cost now. So under 300, fine. We, we really don't have a choice. Could sell some junk here, but no reason to sell everything. Let's just keep on moving. Where are we headed to now? So we've got Jarlstad. This is a good spot. So we need to kind of get back into this four area or four city place. We'll go to Jarlstad first because these are really good places. I mean, this is just a large city with some good stuff in it. And there's a lot of kind of trade between these three places. Yeah, two contracts for us. May as well see what kind of guys they have waiting in the wings. Grave Digger, that would probably go pretty well with a cultist themed group. And yeah, much cheaper tools here. We're going to buy another stack. And another beat up hunting bow. It's worth considering. Hmm. Something like that. Well, dang. Let's um let's buy the hunting bow. It's too the symmetry is too tempting for me. Way too tempting. We'll sell the other one. And now let's take one of these contracts. Follow the tracks, return the demonic statuette. Yeah, man, we really need to get into these two skull things, but I'm just kind of waiting to level up just a bit more. Our gear is getting great. Um, the battle standard of 2k, okay. You know what, let's do that. We've already done that multiple times this episode. 
All we need to do is find a hostile camp and destroy it. Super easy. Some thieves, thugs, and poachers. Please don't run into the forest. Don't make me fight you at night. All of these things would be miserable. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Once again, it's like, where are the raiders? They have these Goinda dags. They've got two of those. Am I pronouncing that right? I don't know. For me, it's almost like a weird Pokemon name. What type of Pokemon would a Goinda dag be? Probably a rock type. <laughs> yeah, probably a rock type. It, I kind of feel like I'm saying Geodude. If you're going to run someone at the Archers and Slingers, you don't want it to be your two-handed Axeman, because his range defense is going to be low. But you can do it with a couple shielded guys. That felt pretty good. Man, they really spread out. Look at the perimeter they made. Impressive. Bring that bill hook to bear. I'll be happy on the high ground. Sure, we'll step in. Most of them will probably be faster than most of us. Knew someone was going to take this high ground position. That's okay. I figured if they did that, they were going to spend their whole turn taking it. Now, Hagen's in kind of a weird spot. But I think we can get him out of it. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting to happen at some point. At some point, our weapons are just going to do enough damage to start one and two shotting these dudes. And that's why we need to take it to the next level. We need to get into that Raider and Reaver type fights. Still no blood on the bill hook. If I don't get any, even like a hit with this, that's going to be the name of the episode. It's going to be Bloodless Bill Hook. Spent all that money for a tier 3 weapon. And it's not going to do anything. <laughs> all the potential DPS locked inside of it. And I think Hardwig even has some of our higher melee skill too. I stepped him in on purpose. I know it makes his likelihood to hit lower. Uh, but what it does do is make it so that this Brigand Thug has more choices on who to hit. And it gives us a better surround and ergo a better chance to hit. Doing the math there, I wasn't really so scared that he would kill us. I was more scared that we wouldn't kill him, if that makes sense. But now it's looking like we need to be a little more careful because he is still in decent shape. And he's going to get to go first if we don't land this hit. I'm actually a little worried about Hartwig now. I don't know. I think he has nine lives. Unless he's the dude we just picked up and I don't remember. Hartwig the Rig, I know. I know. No, no, no. He's a... Uh, He's a butcher that we've had for a while. Let's drop our dog and see where it goes. It's going to lock him down. Very good. Now here we go. Now we just lose our dog instantly. For nothing. It's kind of how it always feels. Alright, good. Once he started, you know, breaking, that's really good for us. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to step in here. 
with Herobert, because what that does is it makes it so that Hagen, who might have been able to step in and get the hit, won't be able to do that this turn. He, he'll be able to get a better surround for us, but we're postponing the kill potentially another turn, which means that we're giving this guy another chance to kill our dog. Maybe we can route him, though. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Just hope he doesn't kill the dog. Maybe the dog lands a few hits and, and takes him out. Unlikely, but now he's got the backup of a surround. So his chances to hit should be pretty likely. Okay, he hit one. Alright, he's out of here. Please don't kill, Lord. Thank goodness. All right. So I think we can kill him this turn. No. Okay. I didn't want to step in here because I want for Hartwick to do that. Just in case we need his bill hook to get that kill. All right. A bunch of junk, but another quiver of arrows. And let's collect our pay. Very good. And someone else can have the bandages. Where did they go? There they are. Can't put them there. Got to put them there. Okay. And we leveled up on Hartwick. He deserves it. And he did have nine lives. You can look at that in the middle of the battle. I just wasn't really feeling like slowing down the pace of the fighting to do that. Yeah, another thing in melee skill. We can get him up to 70 pretty soon. That's pretty nice. We'll take a four here. Just a little bit more survivability. And then Lammy. Boom. That feels pretty good too. Four in resolve. We should definitely take advantage of that. Let's get him up. Up and over that threshold of 40. Anything below 40 is like, man, those dudes just want to run. And we're, I mean, that's an hour. We're, we've done it today, guys. We really made some serious uh, progress. Fulfilled an ambition. And I'm sure very soon we're going to just destroy another place. Get another ambition done. Yeah, perfect. I accept your offer. Let's go and find this place. And then maybe we'll be able to destroy it. It's to the west. Let's just find it real quick, and then maybe tomorrow we can take the fight. Last time it was like right here. Maybe it was this place, Tomb of the Mad King. If we get up on the mountain, we'll get some better vision. Okay, it's not quite there. The Grove to the West. We don't know what's in here. I feel like we might be getting a little off track, but I'm still exploring. If you take too long to do these, the game kind of helps you. I've noticed. Alright, nighttime on a mountain won't do us any good. The problem is, I don't see Frolicker's Grove anywhere written on the map. I see Dreadhorn, right? It could be way over here. It probably is over here. Let's check it out. So waving his hand rather friendly like a man approaches, you respond by unsheathing your sword halfway. He laughs. So many are interested in crumbling ruins, so I can't fault you for being so defensive. Look, I'll tell you exactly where it's at. Just a long way to the southwest of here on the plains. He heads off, cackling with laughter. So a long way on the plains, southwest. Maybe it was right here and I just missed it. Now we're kind of wasting time though. Yeah, we found it. Okay. Well, it's already time to return to Gurnoth the Elder. As crumbling ruins was easier to find than you figured. Yeah, and the game helped us out, as I said. But guys... That's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming, and I can't resist. I have to know what's in here. We won't. All right. <laughs> See you in the next one, guys.
Later.